So dementia and Alzheimer's disease, I kind of tend to use them interchangeably, but really they're not. It is a very common question that we receive as well as what is the difference between Alzheimer's disease and dementia? So I just want to explain a little bit of that in that dementia is really just a set of symptoms. So it includes memory loss and it includes that changes in personality, changes in understanding and changes in judgment. And all of these things start to affect our functioning level as well. So dementia can be a number of different diseases. Alzheimer's disease is really just one form of dementia. It is the most common form of dementia and the one that we see and hear the most about. Vascular dementia is a form caused by a multiple strokes and those strokes could be happening over a number of years. They can be very small, we don't even know we're experiencing them, but gradually we start to notice that there are some changes that look a lot like Alzheimer's disease. We are also seeing a mixed dementia, which is actually vascular dementia as well as Alzheimer's disease, sort of going hand in hand. Lewy body dementia is a little bit different as well. There is some um, physical changes that happen with Lewy body as well. People tend to have some very, very vivid hallucinations. So hallucinations that are very real to them. They can see things or hear things that, um, that are not there, obviously. The rest of us can't see them. Um, but they can be very vivid and very frightening for that individual. And then frontal temporal dementia, lastly, is another form of dementia. It's not as um, common. However, we are seeing this kind of disease happening earlier in a person's life, so usually before 65. And in this one, it's a little bit more challenging to diagnose because the person's memory is often quite um, intact, quite good early on, but they're having other behavior and personality changes that are... Um, that are kind of hard to explain for someone that may still be working and still raising their family and kind of getting kids off to university and those sorts of things. So these are the progressive neurodegenerative diseases. They are irreversible. So once the damage starts, it does continue to progress. However, dementia can also be reversible. So I really just encourage that if you are having some challenges or you're just maybe thinking, something's not quite right, or I'm just maybe having some problems with my memory, we need to look at some of the, what those reversible causes are. So we often think of the three Ds with older adults, so dementia, delirium, and depression. So depression it is a metabolic illness. Um, it can be fairly successfully treated um, using some antidepressants. So that can be a real boon for that individual that once that medication has started, they almost see that some of that forgetfulness and confusion starts to reverse, and that's a really good positive thing. And delirium as well is a medical emergency. Um, it's really a very sudden onset for someone who may already have a compromised cognitive function, and all of a sudden they just seem really, really confused or um, really having a lot of difficulties and in an older adult, that may actually be related just to a urinary tract infection. So once that treatment has started, the anti uh, antibiotic becomes more effective, um, they, you may again see them reverting back to sort of their original or sort of their normal functioning. So kind of being aware of that depression delirium, also being aware of medications. We all tend to have some sort of medication that we take, especially as we grow older. So making sure that those medications are still the right meds for us. Um, nutritional disorders, um, quite often in our work that we do, we would see someone that's living on their own. Um, so, you know, for lunch, they're having tea and toast and for breakfast, they had tea and toast. and. And, you know, but we, we had something to eat. You know, that's often what we'll hear our older adults tell our adult children. Um, but then they move into long-term care or even into just a retirement home. And now we're seeing that that person is getting their meals on time. They're having more than tea and toast. They're having their medications given to them in the right amount at the right time. So in that real routine. And families then say, oh my gosh, maybe I should take my mom back home because she's doing so much better, but she's doing better because we have that routine in place and we have those supports. So just being aware that nutritional disorders can be a real barrier um, for people to continue to do well um, as they're aging and perhaps experiencing some memory problems as well. So with regards to dementia, there are those reversible causes as well as the irreversible ones. If you or someone you know could benefit from the services at the Alzheimer's Society, or if you'd like to get involved and become a volunteer, please visit your local Alzheimer's Society.